We're 20% of the population. We need to be 20% of the TV shows, 20% of the executives, 20% of the leads on film. I'm John Leguizamo, and this is a first look at Leguizamo Does America. L.A. was important to me because obviously I'm an actor and I've been to Hollywood or Hollywoodn't, as I call it, because we land people in the most excluded group in Hollywood that where Hollywood is L.A. is 50 percent Latino. So it feels like you're visiting a cultural apartheid where everywhere you go, there are Latino people except in the studios, except in the networks, except in the streamers offices. I don't know how it looks OK to any executives. So I went there to look at this and to film it and to talk to actors like George Lopez and, and directors Robert Rodriguez to give me insight into what is the problem. Los Angeles is a city of Latinos. You can see that Latin influence everywhere, right down to the street names. And I couldn't think of a better person to welcome me to the real L.A. than this iconic Mexican-American native Angelino, George Lopez. So how did you get started in comedy, man, as a young man? Um, how, how did that happen for you? I think, you know, I'm an only child. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't raise, wasn't raised with a mother, and I never knew my father. My grandmother had six kids, very dysfunctional, very disconnected. They say disconnected family. My grandfather that raised me was not my biological grandfather. Oh, wow, look at that. So television, I needed it. There's no yeah, way yeah, I yeah. could have survived without it. My friend Ernie, who... My first friend ever. Yeah. He showed me comedy, showed me Richard Pryor on HBO. Yeah. And there was a guy who comes over to my house one day and he says, hey, man, you ought to go over to the comedy store. Western Monday night, you just go and you sign up. So he spent, like, maybe four months writing some stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then on June 4th, on 1979, I, I went to Westwood and I went on stage for the first time. George and I are some of the biggest Latin comics with Fluffy in America. And we sell out all across America. I mean, Fluffy sold out Dodger Stadium. There's no comic in American history that has ever been able to sell out Dodger Stadium. That's the power of Latinx. That's the power of Latinos in Los Angeles. But we're the exception, not the rule, when we should be the rule but they're just not letting us in. They're not letting us in, they're not asking us to the table, and we're gonna have to knock that door down. Yo, so check it. I'm about to meet up with another Hollywood legend. Ever since making his industry debut with El Mariachi, this visionary director has been one of the industry's great assets. That's right, it's the one, the only Robert Rodriguez. I want to understand how you started, man, because you're really, truly one of the pioneers who brought independent films to everyone and allowed everyone to believe that they could possibly make an independent film. You were one of those guys. It's just something I always loved to do. I loved being creative. I wasn't very good in school. I'd be sitting in the back of the class making flip cartoon movies in the Spanish-English dictionaries, <laughs> and people would laugh. I'd go, God, I can entertain them with my drawings <laughs> and my art and my little movies, but... What job could I ever get? But I just did the work. Right, right. And when I decided to go make El Mariachi, not to break it into the U.S., I was gonna, just going to go make it in Spanish and sell it to the Spanish home video market right, but that, to that was see if I could make money. I'd be the king if I could just make money doing what I right, love. Right, I just right, want right, to do right. what I love. I had to go do a medical research study to make money in one month to go do that. You became a guinea pig for cash. I was a guinea pig for cash. Yeah. I wrote it over that month that I was in that hospital. I right it leisurely, months. you know, it was like, hey, I'm yeah. getting paid to write, I kept telling myself. <laughs> Robert Rodriguez is hugely important, not just to the Latinx community, but to all American filmmakers, because he revitalized the independent film. He showed us that independent film had so much value, so much money to be made, and that we could do it ourselves and take charge of our destinies because he gave his body to science, donated blood, and let his body be used for experiments to make the money to make his first film, El Mariachi, which was a huge hit. So he has show, always shown me, I guess we've shown each other, because he told me that through my one-man shows, he goes, John can tell his stories about Latin culture and succeed, I can do it on film, and he did. We influence each other, that's the beauty of when we see other Latin people succeed, it gives us the inspiration to keep succeeding and moving forward. There's a popular word in Latin America, sobre mesa, that describes that moment when we gather at the dinner table to share what's on our minds. And for this sobre mesa, I brought together the future of Latinos in the film industry.
Let's talk about representation. Well, how has it been being a Latin woman writer, director in, in, in the biz? It was funny. When I was a little kid, I used to watch TV and movies and everything, and I thought, maybe they just don't know we exist, right? right? Like, maybe they just haven't heard of us. And then I realized that it wasn't necessarily that they didn't know about us. It just maybe they didn't know how to tell our stories, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what I have spent my career trying to do is tell those stories and get them out there. We're finally starting to see Latinos being upgraded, playing firefighters and doctors and lawyers. Because back in the day when I started, man, all, all my white friends who were in my college class, Andrew McCarthy and D.B. Sweeney would have five to seven auditions a day and I have on every five months. Even though we're paying the same tuition, even though I was as good as them, even though I was getting straight A's, I was still not getting the opportunity that I felt I should have had. And then if you looked at the casting breakdown, it looked like Jim Crow because it was like white actor, lawyer, white actor only, uh, <laughs> doctor, white actors only, drug dealer, Latino. And that was the casting breakdown back then. It was Jim Crow. And finally to see Latinos being able to play leads, females leading shows on, on Netflix Wednesday, Jenny Ortega as the lead and, and being a huge hit. I mean, it's incredible to see that, that we're finally getting to a place where we have equity, even though it's still not equity because we're 20% of the population. We need to be 20% of the TV shows, 20% of the executives, 20% of the leads in film. That's when I'll be able to change Hollywoodn't to Hollywood. Hey, thanks for watching. The next full episode airs Sunday on MSNBC at 10 p.m. Eastern and the next day on Peacock. Hey, it's gonna be legit, I'm telling you. It's gonna be fire.